Okay, my 12th week fast, cure all fast, is the title of the video on YouTube I posted. My first report was here two months ago after 28 days, four weeks. My second report was 35 days, then 40 days, Jesus can do it too. And then 56 days back here for eight weeks. Now at that time, Dell had started right after I gave my first report. So I'm at eight weeks and he's at four weeks. And uh, I just wanted to see how long I could go. And here I am now at 12 weeks. And I'm going to do it some more because I'm not weak or hungry yet. And uh, Dell's at eight weeks and uh, he'll be able to report his effects too. How much weight have you lost? Uh, 38 pounds net. But it was 33 last time. So, I mean, uh, not much has been going off in the last month. And, uh, and again, today after finishing the 12 weeks and him as eight, we, we went out to a Chinese buffet and celebrated. So we're not fanatics. Okay, over the 12 weeks, I've had 12 meals. Well, 11, and then the 12th and the 13th week. So, um, the effects I've had are, it seems that it doesn't take much food to keep you going for a real long time, and I'll come back in a minute. So you haven't lost any muscle mass or anything like that? No, no, I'm as strong as ever, you know, I mean, uh, still taking the stairs two at a time at the casino just to test myself. Dr. Modern, what? Is there a medical monitor? A monitor? Monitoring me? No, I know. Everybody's worried about me. That's what, this, that's what this book says. Everybody's going to be worried about you. The book tells you everything. Well, you remember our first report two months ago? Remember I, the guy I read about the guy who his diabetes? After six days, he was freezing and his fingers were numb and he could hardly go upstairs. I said, what's the difference between the way he did it and the way I did it? <laughs> miracle water. Power water. Yeah. Who would believe it, eh? Mind you, this book here, he's got some pretty long fast. It's from straight water. Wow. If the guy's going through that much suffering, you know, uh, after six days, imagine, six days. Well, I think everybody would be different than the other people before. Yeah. Super fat people may last longer. Yeah. Uh, I always made a joke, you know, I'm a, I'm a believer that Jesus is the I always made a joke, you know, I'm a believer that Jesus went, got educated in India, Crown Prince, you know, and in foreign education, he learned about you, if you're in therapy. So, remember they always made fun of the Christians as drunkards and gluttons. Because, yeah, they had a lot of money. They were always partying. So I wonder if maybe going off into the desert for 40 days wasn't a, way, a quick way of losing weight before the coronation, you know? <laughs> so, all right, train's gone. Back. Cut in. Okay, 84 days, 12 weeks. Now, I just read this book this week, Fasting by Dr. Shelton, Herbert M. Shelton. And it's amazing how the reports in here, other than weakness of his people, are similar to what I, I've experienced. They say that people who go on a fast find it much easier than dieting because they're not always hungry. Once your stomach shuts down and isn't growling anymore, um, geez, it's just the mental temptation that makes you want to eat all the time. So I managed to prove to myself that six days out of seven, I cannot eat. And those other events, they were events, you know? They were not, I'm hungry, I gotta go eat something. It was, geez, looks really good. I don't think I can pass this up. It's an event. So, um, now, it reports all the same good stuff that I talked about in the previous videos. So in the previous videos, quick recap, we talked about finding 3,000 components in miracle water, stem cells, DNA, vitamins, minerals, hormones, enzymes, which explains its curative powers and its sustaining powers. So here I am after 84 days, Dell's now up to 56 days, and uh, you know, nibbling in there too. Like I say, we're not 
fanatic. We're not even sick. We just want to see how long this can last without getting hungry. And I can swear that um, I'm ready to continue now for another week without eating until the next event comes up. So I'm not hungry yet, nor weak. I got a question. How long ago did you eat the Chinese food? Because everybody always gets hungry after they eat Chinese This afternoon, but I, hell, I just went home, went straight to bed, and I felt weak, you know, and sleepy, and it just was different, you know. The load might have drained away from my other resources that are normally blood to the arms or going to the digestion now for the first time in a month. Too much um, MSG, then. Yeah, okay, that too. That too. <laughs> well, I know, I know. It's terrible <laughs> stuff, the MSG. So, another good reason. So anyway, this book, Fasting Can Save Your Life, was written 50 years ago. Mind you, he doesn't have the urine to allow you to sustain a fast without hunger, which is why he always advises his people to go lie in bed. You're weak, you're going to just lie there, enjoy your fast, you know? Well, I don't want to do that, and I haven't had to change my life at all. So, you know, I mean, the miracle water made the difference. It lets you cut off the food with all the attendant benefits listed in here. And he talks about dissolving gallstones and MS and cancer and all the great things I talked about earlier. And of course, diabetes, that was in an earlier story as well. Jesus, it's just incredible that such a cheap, cheap, profitable, if you're not eating for three months, guess what happens to the food bill? You only go out and celebrate once a six more days, no food, big pig out, you know? That might be the way to live. So I'm going to keep trying. So if you have any kind of problem, medical, obesity, whatever, how can you not go check out something that's profitable, no hunger pangs, you know, lose a lot of weight, starve your cancers all at the same time? So. My 84 days are a testament to urine fasting being an incredible way of cutting off and letting your body rest and heal itself in its own way. And it keeps repeating in the book, fasting isn't a cure. It just allows the body to do it when you shut down, you know, certain systems. So I believe that when you throw in the miracle water as well, well, that is a dose of amplification that would explain why John Armstrong's book is titled Miracle Water, or Water of Life, rather than just fasting can save your life. Fasting with miracle water can do a lot more than just save your life. So, that's my 84 day report. Not much to say other than the fact that this book 50 years ago vindicates everything I've experienced. And, um, I hope my experience is going to inspire some people to give this a try because maybe the ideal diet of the future is the all-you-can-eat diet <laughs> once you chugged all your miracle water because then you won't be able to eat so much and you won't be hungry that often. So the all-you-can-eat diet might be the name of a new book coming out as long as you're chugging all your miracle water so that you don't feel hungry. Any questions? Are you going to the Burlington meeting next week to celebrate the 90th? The 90th? Jeez, I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe. Della will tell me about it, okay? But I mean, it should be no problem, actually, after today's meal. And I didn't even enjoy it now that I think about it. And he dragged me there. He kept saying, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go, like days in advance. Five days ago, he said, Wednesday, Wednesday. Wednesday, I had to go. So uh, I think I'll be able to pull off another week with no problem. I'm sure with eating Chinese, you'll get hungrier faster. Ah, uh, maybe, but... Is this being sponsored by Mandarin or something? No. <laughs> I had a Polish wedding. That's not sponsored by the Kibasa factory, you know? Yeah. Are you going to get a physical by any chance? Yeah, I'm going to go probably this week. I had bad cholesterol six months ago, really bad, up in the eights, I think. And the guy wanted to put me on statins <laughs> and Crestor and all that stuff. And I said, let me try something on my own. Just give me the test. Yeah. So now I'm going to go back yeah. after oh we 12 weeks and take the test and see if I can walk in and get a wow out of the doctor so I can report that next time. Yeah, what are you going to do with those 12? Well, then I'm going to say something weird here, but I doubt that. Come on. So the last good. thing you want to tell him is the urine there. I'll just tell him I want to move fast. Have the doctor give him a breathalyzer and see if he's really pissed. Yes. <laughs> he's really pissed.
<laughs> so uh, uh, get, see if you can get a copy of the readout. Yeah, of course it's going to give me one. Yeah. So I'll be able to see the difference in, you know, I should expect a huge difference, I would expect. And it would not be neat to have a big surprise. Are you going to be losing weight continuously? No, I, I, it's, I mean, I, I, it says in the book, we advise everybody, start eating and stop your fast when you get hungry. The body knows when enough repair has gone on and it can use a little food. Well, I haven't been hungry yet. And let's face it now, I've been eating two quarter pounders of fat every day for the first 30 or 40 days, right? If you're losing a half a pound of fat a day, just pretend you're eating two big quarter pounders. That's what your body had to eat, a half a pound of fat today, cannibalized, autoized. Yeah. Now I'm only doing about a quarter pound a day, and after a meal, I would expect to shoot up seven or eight pounds by tomorrow. Wow! No kidding! And two days later, I'll be back. But I mean, every time I've gone out for a meal, I've had these huge upward swings. It's as if the body just grabs it and starts sucking it. Everything you can get out of it, you know. Store seven pounds worth of goodies for a day or two. But then it's gone within a day or two. So... So you get your money's worth on it, the all you can eat. Oh, yeah, I do. And you know, and they also, these guys who fast, they also say, and when you're coming off your fast, start with like four pieces of orange in a day, you know, and come back slowly. And here, me or Dell going off after six days, no food to a Chinese food and packing it in, you know. So it hasn't bothered me at all to have starvation pig out, starvation must be like the savannah 10,000 years ago. You kill something once a week and the rest of the time you're on a starvation diet. Works for us, seems anyway. Any other questions? 84 days and still feeling strong, yeah. Isn't Are you gonna continue this for a couple of years? Uh, I'm gonna just continue as long as I feel good. I mean, uh, until hunger sets in. The point is, are people yeah. trying to live to 150 on low calorie diets? Well, if I can find a way to do that without hunger, because Shana the Prime Minister of India. No, that's true, I don't mind. <laughs> nice being thin for a change in my life, you know? I used to be 217 at one point, now I'm 147. Wow. The biggest problem that the public has is not uh, how we're treated, it's how we believe our perception of, of, of what you're saying. Well, our belief system. Oh, yeah. yeah, but these days all you got to do is do an internet search here in the field. You, you go to India and back and tell me about your belief you system. You search all, the, all you want, but you know, until yeah. we change our, our, our subconscious or our, our belief system as to what is, that's why we're hesitating. Well, that's only because you're pretty healthy. Wait till you get sick. You go to yeah. India, Pakistan, <laughs> China, all those middies, most of the Middle East countries, the doctors will recommend urine therapy over pharmaceuticals. Yeah, well, they don't have a mother pharma over there. No, they, yeah. no. they, 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 have pharma they, will, they will recommend pharma. urine therapy over the pharma. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm saying, uh, if well, the Indian now, the oh, biggest nice. seller on the shelves right now, like you said, and I checked into it, cow because it's got three times more uh, stem cells than everything else. You can buy it right off the shelf like uh, soy milk. Wow. And it's acceptable. Yeah. They sell it's over there. I got open minds here, they all check. You don't have a white jacket on, and you've done it for a while. What's the cow What? What's the cow here? I look at all I know is now they're marketing fresh cow urine in India because cow urine is supposed to be better than anybody else. It's better than ours. Okay? Miracle, better than human urine, cow urine. Check it out. Okay? Yeah? How much street pork when you're on a uh, fast or a diet? How much street pork or in stone did you shovel in a day? And how deep a trench did you dig in a day? I went on a 10 day fast, yeah. but I shoveled three quarters stone every day and dug a trench three and four feet deep every day. And if anybody don't believe me, there's Ray Simpson standing over there, he'll bear a few folks for me. Well, I haven't felt any weakness whatsoever, but then again, I had sustenance, you didn't. And I, you should have been like cold and weak like the other guy. So what, what did you do for anything? Nothing. Water. Water. Fat. It's about as fat. Yeah, water is way. Yeah. So I mean, let's face it, the body has ways of cannibalizing the least useful cells. And that's where mine went. Yeah. But you need salt too. 
Yeah. Well, there's 12 in here. Okay. Yeah, that's right. This is that one. Yeah. Yeah. You don't water it down. No. Nope. It tastes nothing coming out of the tap. That's what you call sustaining. Yeah. Bring it warm or chilled or. Yeah. Which? Oh, right out of the tap, I said. Right away. Warm. Okay. And is it not alcohol? A little bit. Yes. It'll, it'll, it'll cure your ass and indigestion. How is your blood? What? How is your blood? Well, I've never had trouble with, you know, other than high cholesterol that I'm hoping to bring down. But you're not keeping a blood record in yourself? No, not really. And uh, I don't follow this, this recipe that you have, but I do eat well, like good food. And I go and do my workouts, and I'm saying I'm able to do my heavy lifting job. Right? I'm not your age at this point. So, and I don't get which is what we are uh, selling here while we're going. Read the book. <laughs> Read the book. No, yeah. I, I work out, right? Yeah, yeah. And I maintain my body okay. health that way and by what I'm eating. And it's not my urine. Well, what I'm saying is, yeah. I don't understand what it is that you're. Read the book. Well, okay. Um, Were you diagnosed with something? No, 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 no. I just, I just, I looked into what's in urine. Yes. Okay. Three thousand different useful chemical components: stem cells, DNA, vitamins, minerals, all the stuff that you need to repair. So you were, you were saying it comes out balanced for what your body needs. Yeah. If you've got a particular disease, and you'll have more things to fight that disease produced then. This is from the hunter-gatherer. It's like tailor-made medicine. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, the interesting thing that he pointed out in this book is that we're all raised wrong. The minute you're sick and you go to bed and you don't want to eat, mama goes, come on, eat, eat, keep your strength up. The body wants to go into a period of rest and healing and shut down digestion and it says, I don't want any food. And our history, we just keep going, eat, eat, keep your food up, keep your strength up. You need food to keep it up. Well, the book points out that every time they make a meat after a fast where they've gotten better, they now get sick again. Yeah. It recurs. Parkinson's. Tremors, right? After a 30-day fast, a lady lost all her tremors. Then she started eating again. It came back. Now she went on another fast, stopped eating, they came back less. Then on the third fast, when she started eating again, they weren't there. So, your body tells you when it's time to start eating again. You get hungry and his advice is when a kid says, I ain't hungry, leave him alone. Instead of forcing food down his throat, which is going to make him sicker. Isn't that a fascinating yeah. angle on medicine? How we've been stuffing our kids with food when the body should be going into the healing mode by turning off the digestive system. And they want to turn it off. They want to go to bed. They don't want to eat. You're going, come on, keep your strength up. Ice cream, cakes. You hit you know, then good, try it, you know. So his angle was that you should just let a sick kid stay in bed for as long as he doesn't want to eat. And doesn't that make a lot of sense when you consider all animals do that? You know, when an animal gets sick, mama bear doesn't come over and go, eat, 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 right? So um, that's the way we were all ill-raised and ill-conditioned. And I found that a fascinating angle he brought up in that book. So, but he, again, these guys are always limited by the fact that they only drink water. They don't have the sustenance of the kidney milk that John Armstrong's system proposed, which explains why they're all so weak. They need monitoring physicians, you know, and here I am after three months, you know, still completely fine. I ain't even hungry yet. So that's the big difference, a startling difference. And people are worried. They think, you know what I mean? Wow, you know, you could, you don't know what you're doing. You're not a doctor. Nobody's monitoring you. What if your bowel falls out of its place because it's so empty? <laughs> I'm wondering if, when the body cannibalizes other cells, does it need anything? 
You know, I mean, let's face it, the other cells were yeah. built with products by the body and for as reserves. And when you're tapping your reserves, do you need anything else? Okay, yeah, but what about the issue? When your saliva, when your perspiration no longer tastes salty, at that point in time, you are in a serious health issue. Well, I don't, I don't, I'm not aware of the taste of my person, my No, no, when you're ever. perspiring. Oh, I see. If it doesn't I, taste I salty. I didn't know that. It's, it's dangerous. Okay. But it depends on the salt. Okay. The salt when there's salt. Okay. So, yeah. So when you're fasting, you need the salt. You, and I'm saying maybe the salts salt. are in the cells that are being cannibalized you, already. But the thing is, you're putting salt out in the pasture for the animals. Okay. You put it out. The deer come out beside the highway after the winter snow is gone to get the rope. That's why you see them along the highway. They're eating the salt that was sprayed on the side of the road. Yeah. Well, I, I would hope that, you know, I, I would hope so that when I eat salt, I'll issue. get a clue. I'm hungry and I'll go eat some, you know. Well, that, 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 that in the urine, there's, there's a salt. Uh, yeah, there's lots of them. You know, the 3,000 different yeah. components, so That's maybe they're wrong enough. Though. But that could be an issue where you have to make some choices. When, well, yeah, but at least I'm recycling mine. These yeah. guys are, are, are flushing their salts down yeah. the drain, right? But I think salt is an issue that we should know about. Yeah, okay. But also, too, the fact of having good salt, like Himalayan or sea salt that's got the minerals in it, not white table salt, that's the older for now. Yeah, okay. Another thing you should test is water. Yeah, it's cool water, okay. You can test your own line every day. Yeah, I, I got the uh, I got the litmus paper. Do you have available to talk about? I got the litmus paper, so I try and stay alkaline. And if I'm not, no, I... but are you already keeping a track of all this? Well, no. You mean write it down? No, I'm why just not? why? I'm just making sure I'm alkaline. If I'm not, I take some baking or baking soda. You should have a study book. You're closing in on some record numbers. Right? Yeah, I guess, I guess. But I mean, okay. it was so easy. Anybody else could do it too under more official conditions. Yeah. I'm the, look at I eat 12 times. I'm not a great test, am I? Well, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, it's not like a real pure fast. I don't know. You know, so I'm just saying that I'm not a great example. That's why I don't miss the detailed Do you think charts. Else in this room would be any better? I don't think so. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying anybody who's got a real sickness and, and wants to do it could yeah. then do the charts and be monitored. But I didn't. I wasn't worried about monitoring. I just wanted to see if I, how I could go without being hungry, yeah. and see if this was true. You know. And geez, now I'm homing in on his 101 days. But I cheated 12 times, so it don't count. You know. But anyway, who knows? You know. Maybe maybe I could do one meal a week for a year. That'd be neat. So let's see. And uh, you know, as long as I don't feel weak and I don't feel hungry, I'm just going to keep doing it. Well, go, kind of go on a celebration and have a good reason. What? I was kind of concerned when you had to go lay down. Well, yeah, but don't, I, I've, always, off, right? I've always wanted to nap after a big meal. How much did you eat? I completely everything. Yeah. Until I could eat no more. What, three plates, five plates? What? Well, <laughs> geez, yeah, 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 yeah. I had a salad course, I had a dinner course, I had a dessert course, I had two pieces of pecan pie, I had three scoops of ice cream, I had some peaches, oh, you're I had some hungry. cherry sauce, some strawberry sauce, some chocolate pudding, I had wonton soup, I had a I had yeah. a chicken so wing. Had, had, so basically you had a week's worth of food in one day. Yeah, maybe okay. I did. Okay. We're not going to worry about you then, then Can we move forward with the meeting now? Yeah. yeah. All right. Dave, you want to give your story about your yeah. eight weeks? No. What was your argument? Right? And then add. He's taking the ditch over here. Okay. He didn't answer my question. Oh yes. How much street corner stone did you shovel when you were on with that? I did. I did. I did a lot of walking. I could get on the trampoline, yes. and I could. I could. You know. I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. I hear it's good to do exercise too. You're the proof. I hear it's good to do exercise on a fast, and you're the proof. You know how batteries work? If you have a battery, if you let it run all the way down to the bottom before you recharge it, it will recharge and stay more full and usable longer. If you only go down halfway, halfway before recharging, halfway, 
You might never get to the bottom again on the next run. You gotta sort of drain it on a regular basis to keep it full power. Well, what happens if the body works the same way? What happens if a lot of strenuous exercise on a three-day fast does you really, really a lot of good? By draining all the energy while maximizing the exercise and then getting back into the food. Who knows if a body works like a battery does? Why not? So my, I've heard that exercise is good during a fast, so who am I to doubt it? We're mostly energy anyway. Yeah. You might retire your body and you might live a long time. Well, again, I, I think we're going to be, Fukushima, I keep telling you about the nuclear fallout oh, yeah. that we're all sucking in. Yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of old timers, hey, a lot of funerals recently, buddies, with yeah. gray hair, a lot of buddies dying in a month. Isn't it shocking? You know, you got, anybody got a pool, a little fish pool outside, pet fish dead? Any fish alive in the pool? Fish belly up in the pond and kids belly up in the pool? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's scary. And that's one of the main reasons I decided I was going to do this, because the book explains how cancer cells and tumor cells get cannibalized first. And if we're all getting all these new little cancers from the fallout that's traveling through our bodies, may as well wipe them out before they get very big in a generalized way. And that might be the only way to survive our nuclear future is through a starvation diet so that we are always starving any cancer cells. It might be the way we're going to have to live. No more high living cuisine, but we all live 140 years. Is there any test that can be done on the thyroid for uh, absorption of the... Uh, well, I guess they could just measure the radioactivity and tell you if there's radioactive uh, iodine in there, or the regular kind, which is why I take two drops of iodine to keep it full. So if any radioactive comes by, it's not going to be sucked up. It's already full of natural iodine. But iodine is one of the fastest decaying isotopes, so it's one of the not so worrisome ones by now, because compared to plutonium. So I, I don't know if there'd be much iodine out there to be worried about compared to the other bad ones. So. But if, if there was a way of testing your thyroid and, and get a guy or counter, <laughs> that's all I can think of. To see if that that method is also doing. Oh, I see if it could help. Well, sure. What else can you do, right? Eh? Well, when if you it goes tick 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 tick, and then a week later, no tick tick tick. Hey, maybe it works. When you get your 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 checkup, ask him and just see if there is a. A test for thyroid. Okay, gentlemen, thank you. Finish off a couple of comments on John's uh, thing. He and I, well, I followed him because he, was, he didn't fall over. I went in it to lose weight, not to be healthy, and I figured crawler would be the healthy side. And I think different people. Hopefully, when you get home, have completely different effects from this kind of diet because I'm going through something somewhat very different than John. I have lost a lot Where's of weight since lost 38 or 40 pounds. Can I see it for a minute? Oh, I got another one. Well, I've been, I've been now exactly uh, two months. I've lost 20 pounds. I'm 5'6", I'm and I've lost 20 pounds. He's, I'm 180, and he's, what, 6 foot 2, and he's 148. <laughs> so there's a difference there. Uh, and the other thing is, I, I'm not, uh, like, John will stay away from food. You know, he, we, you know, we had a fun pig out today and so on, but I'll have a little snack every night. An inch of kielbasa and a piece of cheese or something. Sometimes just a slice of bread and peanut butter. But usually a little bit of something. So John has made the point that when you're doing this kind of a diet, a uh, little bit of food seems to be enough. And I'm kind of half agreeing with that because it's like I'm eating regular meals all the time, but just a little tidbits. So I'm thinking now this is not like I'm going to do the diet and then I'm going to stop and go back to wherever. I'm never. I'm finished with that kind of. You know, morning, noon, and night eating, and, and the idea of eating when you're hungry, I kind of like the idea of that. So we'll see how that goes. So anyway, the, what I wanted to talk a bit about tonight, just uh, I was going to do a little bit more, but I'm going to make it fairly quick. This, uh, I, I mentioned it before a couple of times, and the URLs are on the uh, pieces of paper that I've left on the table. The poem that I left around was written by a lady in the 18th century, and it kind of struck me as pretty, you know, acute. Oh, sorry, pretty acute for that long ago. 
and uh, the, the Revelatorium is not a website about religious matters, it's the exact reverse, but it does cover off some stuff. And the reason why is that nobody owns a franchise on the terminology and the way things really are out there. So there's a crossover. But I thought I'd read a couple of small little pieces out of the Revelatorium that uh, have confused a lot of people from the biblical side. So talk closer to the mic. Oh, all right. This, I, I, this, I was telling John today, much closer. The fortune cookie said you will have a big turn of events in your life, <laughs> like today or something. Well, I've never spoke to a group before in my entire life. This is the first time. You know, I've always been too, you know, so here we are. I'm not holding the mic properly, please, uh, but anyway, I'll just, I'll just read, I'll read two or three of these pages and we'll see what, it, and the idea is that you people would look at the website, if you have questions, you can ask me next, next time on instead of going into a long dialogue of questions now, because there are a lot of questions. So anyway, here's, this one is from chapter 20, uh, the chapter deals with the, uh, number of the beasts. Now there's been probably what 20,000 books written about that. You know, different theories. So theories, wisdom, let him who hath understanding count the number. Can you talk into the mic, Dell, please? Right. Here is wisdom. Let him who hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is also the number of a man, and that number is six, six, four, and six. Six, six, six itself is not the problem. The problem is that through it, both your outer bodily manifestation and your outer consciousness, not these terms for explaining, you know, this is chapter 20, so there's a lot of explaining before that. But that are directly attuned to the frequencies of the animal kingdom. Despite the compelling connotation, the number does not refer to credit card numbers, social insurance numbers, or any other such personal identification, pin type numbers, of other world terminology. Rather, the problem is twofold. It refers both to your physical body composition and also to a type of other consciousness behavior, which among one of its many cankers would consider such burden numbering schemes within a society useful. First, it is because the outer body manifestation of Earth's animal kingdom is carbon-based. The number 666 relates specifically to the particular type of carbon atom comprising the animal kingdom's main outer body constituent. The particular carbon atom is carbon-12. Carbon-12 is the most abundant form of carbon on Earth, accounting for nearly 90% of all known forms of carbon. Carbon-12 is an isotope of carbon that consists of six protons, six electrons, and six neutrons. Ergo, 666, the number of the animal kingdom or beast. As you are currently incarnated into Earth's physical realm under the same atom-carbon rules as for the atom kingdom materialization, 666 is also the number of a man. So that takes you completely away from the mumbo jumbo of the mystics into actual fact. So in fact, I'm going to finish with that. The Revelatorium has 35 chapters. 400 some odd pages, like basically paragraph after paragraph. So the revelatorium is like that. The revelatorium, in case you're not aware, is the intelligent design by which creation is put together. It's not like here's some mathematics or the flowers have Fibonacci series, so it must be, you know, it's the actual why it was brought into being, why it was necessary to have an intelligent design, the rules of it, and how the rules have been used to build up creation, which at this point is about 900 trillion light years across, and it's just beginning. It's still a baby. So, anyway, there you go. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions? Ooh. Oh, well, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, if any of you read that website next week or next month, I'll answer your question. Anything.